We briefly touched on the corkboard in our video about the different view modes, and we'll use this video to explore the corkboard in more depth. The corkboard is typically used as a way of viewing the subdocuments inside a folder. For this example, I have a text which has the manuscript split into chapters, all stored as subdocuments of a single folder. I'll click on this folder and make sure we're in corkboard mode. The subdocuments appear here as a series of index cards, each of which shows the chapter title. Right now they also display a preview of how each document starts, because I haven't entered a synopsis for any of these chapters. I'll enter one here for chapter 1, and you'll notice that the synopsis appears in black text, while the document preview appears in light grey, to indicate it isn't a manually entered synopsis. Note that the synopsis has also updated when we open the inspector, and can be viewed alongside the document itself when we go back to looking at this document in the editor. Likewise, a synopsis added from the inspector or the outliner will appear on the associated index card when we return to the corkboard. Thanks to these index cards, the corkboard allows us to get a more detailed overview than the binder, in a format that pen and paper writers might be more familiar with. It's more than just an overview tool though, it's possible to create new folders and documents on the corkboard using these icons in the lower left. Note that the corkboard will only show top level documents. For example, if I create a folder in here named part 2, and use the binder to move chapters 15 through 29 into it, those chapters won't be visible on this corkboard because they're nested deeper inside the structure of this project. To open the contents of any of these index cards, whether that's opening a single document or just drilling down to view the corkboard for the next folder, just double click the icon in the corner of the index card. The corkboard also allows you to drag cards around to rearrange them in the structure of your project. Note how when I drag this chapter to an earlier position in the corkboard, it's moved up the project structure in the binder. This is ultimately rearranging the order of documents in your finished manuscript. There's also a freeform mode on the corkboard, which allows you to move index cards around without committing to changing your project structure, but we'll cover that in another video. Now let's take a look at what happens if we select multiple folders in the binder. Holding down the control key, I'll select these two folders and the paperback front matter folder for good measure. The corkboard now shows the contents of all the selected folders, with a dividing line between them. This can be displayed in a few different ways. The horizontal view can either wrap around, limited to the width of your Scrivener window, or be arranged in a long row where you scroll left to right to view the index cards, and the vertical view displays everything in columns. Next to those is an Arrange by Label option, which displays corkboard cards in rows or columns linked by Scrivener's coloured labels, which can be customised to have any significance you like, whether it's keeping track of characters, events in the story, or other aspects of your manuscript. We'll cover more about labels in another video. The last icon in the footer row is the corkboard options, which allows you to change the display settings for this view mode. The first few sliders control how large index cards appear, both in size and in ratio, and how sparsely they are spaced. The drop down option here allows you to set a fixed number of cards to display, so that cards are resized automatically when you resize the Scrivener window, and Keyword Chips controls how many keyword icons are displayed per card if you're using keywords to tag documents in your project. Once again, keywords will be explored in a separate video. Some additional corkboard display options are found in the View Corkboard Options menu. If you're using labels, you can enable label pins for a quick look at which index cards have which labels assigned. Enabling status stamps will show the status for that document, allowing you to keep track of which documents you've marked to do, revised, final, and so forth. Remember that these are just default options by going to Project Project Settings and editing the Label List and Status List you can add to or edit these to suit your own way of working. That's all we're going to cover in this video. If you want to learn more about the features of Scrivener, our other videos should be linked nearby. Thanks for watching and happy writing!